when compounds dissolve into solution or into water, that produces a homogeneous mixture. And those homogeneous mixtures, when added, can sometimes form an insoluble precipitate. We call this a precipitate or a precipitation reaction. And that precipitate is an insoluble solid that falls to the bottom of the container. Sometimes this is referred to as crashes out. In this particular example, we have potassium iodide that is dissolved into the solution and lead nitrate. When these combine, we get two new products, which are potassium nitrate. If we look at our solubility rules, potassium nitrate is always soluble, so it is going to remain as ions in the solution. We also get lead iodide. Lead iodide, if we look at the solubility rules, will not dissolve into solution. It's not soluble. And so this is that yellow solid that you see forming from the combination of two clear solutions. So let's look at what's happening on a submicroscopic scale in, this, in these chemical reactions. This is a new one where we have sodium chloride, which is table salt. When we write the dissociation reaction, we get sodium with a positive charge, chlorine with a negative charge. We also have another beaker that contains silver nitrate. This is also a soluble compound, so we have a dissociation reaction for silver and nitrate. When we combine these into with each other, the silver combines with the chloride and the sodium potentially combines with the nitrate. So we are swapping partners. We're swapping cations with anions to see what will form. When we take sodium nitrate, sodium nitrate, if we look at our solubility rules, is always soluble. So it is going to stay as the ions in the solution. So that's why we see the sodium and the nitrate still as the ions. When we take the silver and the chloride and we check our solubility, we see that it is insoluble. So it will form a solid and will combine together in the container to form a new solid of silver chloride. So in the picture, that is the white solid that you see forming in this reaction. So to determine what our products are, we take the cation of one, combine it with the anion of the other, and we need to balance the charges to make our new compound. So because sodium is a plus one and nitrate is a minus one, we get one sodium, one nitrate. When we look at the silver, silver is a plus one, chloride is a minus one, so one of each combined to make our new compound. So our overall chemical reaction is sodium chloride, which is aqueous, dissolves in water. Silver nitrate is aqueous and dissolves in water. We get sodium nitrate, which is aqueous, remains as the ions in the solution, and silver chloride, which is a solid. We also need to balance the chemical reaction in this particular example because everything has a plus one charge and a minus one charge, our reaction is already balanced. However, 
This will not always be the case, and you may need to add coefficients to balance the reaction. So let's try an example of writing balanced precipitation reactions. We've got ionic compounds, and we want to see if when they are combined, they form a precipitate. We're going to start by checking our solubility rules. So potassium hydroxide, potassium, no matter what it's attached to, is always soluble. So our KOH will be an aqueous solution. We look at magnesium chloride. So chloride is usually soluble. Magnesium is not an exception. So our magnesium chloride will be an aqueous solution. Now we need to predict what our products are going to be. So if we look at potassium based on its position on the periodic table, it is a plus one charge. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion and always has a minus one charge. Magnesium is based on its position on the periodic table is a plus two. It's in column two and chloride is a minus one. So we are going to take the potassium, combine it with the chloride because we are swapping partners. We're taking the cation of one, combining it with the anion of the other. So potassium is a plus one charge. Chloride is a minus one. So we get KCl. If we check its solubility, potassium, no matter what it's attached to, is always aqueous. If we look at our magnesium and combine it with the hydroxide, magnesium is a plus two, hydroxide is a minus one, and so it's going to take two hydroxides, which means we need parentheses. If we check our solubility, hydroxides are usually insoluble. Magnesium is not in column one, so this would form a solid. So magnesium hydroxide would be our precipitate. We now need to balance the chemical reaction. So we have one magnesium on each side of our arrow, so that is balanced. Our chloride, there are two on the left side and only one on the right. So in order to balance the chloride, we need to put a two in front of our potassium chloride. That changes the amount of potassium in the chemical reaction. So on the right side, we have two potassium. On the left side, we need two potassium. Two in front of the potassium also affects the OH, so we have two hydroxide on the left, two hydroxide on the right, so our reaction is balanced. Let's try our next chemical reaction. Barium bromide and magnesium sulfate. So barium bromide, we check. Barium is in column two, so that's not any of our rules at the top, but bromide is usually soluble. Barium is not an exception, so this is an aqueous solution. If we look at magnesium sulfate, sulfates are usually soluble. Magnesium is not an exception. So this is an, also an aqueous solution. If we look at our ions, barium is a plus two, bromide is a minus one. Magnesium is a plus two, sulfate is a minus two. Okay. We're gonna swap partners, we're gonna put the barium with the sulfate. We it just takes one of each because barium is a plus two, sulfate is a minus two. So if we look at our 
Sulfates, sulfates are usually soluble. We go to the exceptions. Barium is an exception, so that means this is going to form a solid. It's going to be insoluble because it is an exception. If we take the magnesium, put it with the bromide. Magnesium is a plus two. Bromide is a minus one, so it takes two of the bromide. Magnesium bromide, bromides are usually soluble. Magnesium is not an exception, so this is an aqueous solution. Now we need to balance our chemical reaction. So we have one barium on the left, one on the right, two bromides, two bromides, one magnesium, one magnesium, one sulfate. We are balanced already. Pause the video and see if you can complete the last three reactions. If we look at calcium nitrate, anything with nitrate is always soluble no matter what. So this is an aqueous solution. Anything with sodium, no matter what, is also an aqueous solution. So now we want to form our products. Calcium is a plus two. Nitrate is a minus one. Sodium, based on its position on the periodic table, is a plus one. Phosphate is a negative three. So we're going to take and swap partners. So we're going to take calcium, combine it with phosphate. It's going to take three calcium to combine with two phosphate to balance the charges. If we check our solubility, phosphates are usually insoluble because calcium is in the second column. That is not an exception. So this is going to be our solid. Sodium and nitrate are going to combine. Plus one charge on the sodium, minus one charge on the nitrate. And so just takes one of each. If we check our solubility, this is an aqueous solution or aqueous compound. It's always soluble. Now we need to balance our chemical reaction. So I'm going to start with the most complicated compound, which is our calcium phosphate. It takes three calcium on the right side, so we need three calcium on the left. This gives us six nitrates. Three times two is six, so we're going to need six nitrates on the right-hand side. This gives us six sodium on the right hand side. So in order to get six sodium, we need to put a two in front of our sodium phosphate. Now we have two phosphates on the left, two phosphates on the right, and our reaction is balanced. Sodium nitrate and calcium chloride. So sodium nitrate will be aqueous. Our calcium chloride will also be aqueous. To predict our products, our sodium is a plus one, our chloride is a minus one. Our calcium is a plus two, nitrates a minus one. So it's gonna take two nitrates to balance the charge. If we check our solubility rules, sodium chloride will be aqueous. Calcium nitrate, nitrates are always soluble, will also be aqueous. So this one, because both of our products are aqueous, 
means that there is no reaction. So there would be no reaction. Everything is going to remain as the ions in the solution. Let's balance this one just to have our reaction balanced. So calcium nitrate, there's two nitrates. We're going to have to put a two in front of the sodium nitrate on the left. That changes the sodium. So if we put a two in front of the sodium chloride, that tells us we have two sodiums, but also two chlorides on the right. We've got two chlorides on the left, so we are balanced. Lead nitrate, sodium chloride. So anything with nitrate is always soluble. So that's an aqueous solution. Sodium chloride, anything with sodium is always soluble. Lead, based on the charge of the nitrate, which is a negative one, the lead will be a plus two. Sodium is a plus one, chloride's a minus one. We're going to take the lead, combine it with the chloride. It takes two chlorides because lead is a plus two. If we check our solubility, chlorides are usually soluble, but lead is a, an exception. So this will be a solid. If we look at, take our sodium, put it with our nitrate. Sodium is a plus one, nitrate's a minus one. If we check our solubility, it will be aqueous. Now to balance our chemical reaction. So we've got two chlorides on the right. We need to put a two in front of our sodium on the left to balance the chloride. We have two nitrates and two sodium, so we need a two in front of our sodium nitrate to balance our reaction. So in this case, our lead chloride will be our precipitate because it forms a solid. Hopefully through this chapter, you have learned about what charges are formed from different elements on the periodic table and the polyatomic ions that exist, how to connect those ions together into our ionic compounds, how to name them, and the properties that these ionic compounds have. We've learned about solubility, whether or not something will dissolve in solution, and how to write balanced chemical reactions. We discussed what a mole was, and how to write dissociation and precipitation reactions. This has been a very productive chapter learning about ionic bonding.